As you've probably understood at this point, carbon dioxide is one of the key polluting warming gases that we people are adding to the atmosphere. And it turns out scientists have a pretty good idea of where these gases are coming from and also where they're going in our Earth system. So let's first look at where did this sources of these changes come from? And we know quite well, it's associated with many of our inventions for the Industrial Revolution. So this movie is beginning here in the 1700s, and it's showing you our total annual global emissions of carbon dioxide. And what we can see is that we begin to put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as we're developing technologies. First, developing technologies that burn coal, then moving to technologies in transportation, burning oil, and later on, adding technologies that burn methane gas, sometimes known as natural gas. You can see that these inventions were beginning in England and then spreading into Europe and the United States. And here, as we entered the uh, 20th century, these technologies were spreading all around the world. So that today, we're seeing carbon dioxide emissions occurring from all around the world, but especially Europe, North America, and Asia. So there are some particularly important places where we've been creating carbon dioxide emissions in our Earth system. We also understand what are the different parts of our society that are creating these emissions. We can see them in all parts of our society, buildings, transportation, um, industry, forestry, all of these different parts of our society create polluting greenhouse gas emissions. That means that there's not just one single silver bullet solution. Instead, we can undertake solutions that cross all of these different parts of our society and are needed, which means that you can get active in solutions no matter where your interest lies. As we see these emissions into our atmosphere, we can also clearly track how they've influenced our globe's temperature. In this movie, you're gonna see what our Earth's air temperature has been since the late 1800s. What you'll see is that as the Industrial Revolution was beginning, we were not having a lot of immediate influence on the Earth's temperature. We were adding gases to the atmosphere, but the Earth was still taking time to respond to those additions to the atmosphere. It was not until the 1990s and the 2000s here that we really start to see how our emissions into the atmosphere are changing Earth's temperature. And you can see that we get more warming over land than over ocean. So together as a global average, we've already reached about 1.2 degrees warming as compared to before the industrial revolution. Unfortunately, that's not the same everywhere on the planet. For folks in the Arctic, they're experiencing two to three times faster warming than other parts of the planet. In some parts of the Arctic, that warming is even more rapid. So the local experience of global warming is not the same for everyone, but everywhere around the planet, we're experiencing changes. Now, we're not just adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. The Earth system also helps us by taking up carbon dioxide. About 40% of the carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere remains there. But all of our land and vegetation is also doing work to take up carbon dioxide and keep it out of our atmosphere. And our ocean is also taking up carbon dioxide and keeping it out of our atmosphere. Unfortunately, this does result in ocean acidification. But when it comes to the warming of our air, the work that the land and the ocean are doing to take up carbon dioxide is really important and valuable. But they won't be able to continue to do this service for us forever. So we need to recognize that we know well the causes and the sources for global warming, and this influence is felt everywhere. But some of the important work the Earth system's been doing to help take up our polluting gases has a time limit. So we really want to act now before we reach these limits so that we can start to rein in greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere 
and not run into the limits of how the ocean and the land can also help us.